So we are reading from Shishida the last Sudha Nidhi from Shira Prabhupada and this uh, Verse number twenty-five. <coughs> o Shri Radhike. When can I see your beautiful blooming lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love for Krishna that is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna that is like a moon that causes the ocean of rasa to swell and that is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like bumblebees O Shri when can I see your beautiful blooming lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love for Krishna that is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna that is like a moon that causes the ocean of rasa to swell and that is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like bumblebees a lotus flower in a love lake commentary can you read again this is very much so again, she, O oh, Sri Radhike, when can I see your beautiful blooming lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love for Krishna? that is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna that is like a moon that causes the ocean of rasa to swell and that is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like bumblebees. The hair, the hair. The hair, yeah. Yes. The hair. So when can I see your beautiful blooming lotus face mm. that is growing in a lake full of true love for Krishna? Yeah. So the face is growing in a lake full of true love for Krishna. And the face is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna. And the face is like a moon that causes the ocean of rasa to swell. Ocean of Rasa means Krishna then. Rasa Vaisaha. <clears throat> so like a moon, it causes the ocean of Rasa to swell. And this face is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like 
bumblebees. So when can I see this face? This is really beautiful. Wow. A lotus flower in a love lake. Commentary. Sripat in his Swarup Avesh from beginning to end. He does not have to endeavor to get the visions. They come spontaneously. He floats on waves of prayer into the kingdom of transcendental pastimes. Again? He floats on the waves of prayers into the kingdom of transcendental pastimes. Wow. Yes. In his Kinkari Swarup, Sripat has now finished massaging Srimati's limbs with oil. The maidservant knows what Srimati doesn't know. Nagarendra, the king of womanizers, is admiring her and her uncovered limbs from up in a tree. Swamini is absorbed in thoughts when her maid servant calls her Swamini. Get up and take your bath. Srimati is startled and says, Who is it? It is you anointing me with oil? I forgot it was you. Your touch is just like Krishna's. Blessed is this maidservant that she can touch Swamini exactly as Shyama does. She is an eternally perfect maidservant from whom the aspirants should learn their services. Shilanarutan Das Thakur sings, I will joyfully serve Radha and Krishna along with their dearest maidservants by dressing their limbs. Please keep me at your lotus feet for such services amidst your dearest maidservants. I will always stay with these maidservants as their maidservant, serving you in different ways with fragrant sandal paste, jeweled ornaments and silken garments without even a tiny drop of mercy from these eternally liberated maidservants 
it is impossible to experience and perform such services. Can you read this again? Without even a tiny drop of mercy from these eternally liberated maidservants, it is impossible to experience and perform such services. Lord Krishna explains to Lord Brahma Briya in the four root verses of the Bhagavat 2.9.32. O Brahma, may you realize the full actual truth about my forms, qualities, and activities by my grace. Without mercy, it cannot be understood. Therefore, there is a compassionate blessing here. <coughs> The secrets of Ragabhachan can only be known through grace. Krishna Tatvakta Karunya Matra Lapaika Ketuka Bhaktira Samrita Simba. The only cause of Raganuga Bhakti is the mercy of Krishna or his devotees. The only cause of Raganuga Bhakti is the mercy of Krishna or his devotees. The Acharyas are most merciful <coughs> for they left their experiences behind in their books. Sripad Saraswati's heart Sripad Saraswati's heart's prayers are kept in this Radha Rasa Surimidi, the nectar ocean of Radha's Rasa. An aspirant is blessed if he can taste even one drop of this nectar ocean. The maidservant has completed Srimati's bath and starts to dress and ornament her. But Swamini has noticed an unnatural look in her eyes <laughs> and quickly covers her limbs. Startled, she looks all around thinking, Is beautiful Shyam maybe behind me somewhere? <laughs> Shyam is enchanted by the sweet gestures Srimati makes at that moment. <coughs> and the maidservant feels blessed. When Swamini sees her maidservant looking to the top 
of the nearby Kadamba tree, she understands that there is a secret hidden in one of the tree's branches. And when she looks carefully, she sees a bluish effulgent emanating from it. Although Krishna tries to hide himself, Srimati catches him with her glance. At that moment, her limbs are adorned with the Bhava Bhushana, emotional ornament called Vilas. And many intense emotions become manifest in her, like shyness and opposition pull her homewards. Heedlessness urges her to perform her duty of picking flowers, as if she was going to pick flowers after her bath to worship the sun. And ecstasy and lusty desires enter deeply into her body and mind, causing an indescribable condition in her. Shyam Sundara considers himself blessed by seeing her sweet condition at that moment. E bhava yukta deki radhasya nayana Sangama hoite sukha poi koti guna. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. No. When I see Rata's face, When I see Radha's face and eyes in that mood, I get millions of times more pleasure than when I directly unite with her. Swamini chastises her maidservant with her eyes, saying, If you saw him, then why didn't you say anything? The maidservant answers with her eyes, I didn't see him. I also saw him just now. <laughs> Actually, it was Srimati's innermost desire to see Shyam when she decided to bathe in the Yamuna that morning. Snana Chole Peti Kanai. The jewel temple of her mind. Actually, it was Srimati's innermost desire to see Shyam when she decided to bathe 
in the Yamuna that morning. Snana chole petipo kanai. The jeweled temple of her mind was filled with the light of hope for the fulfillment of her desire. How beautiful is her face when she shows the sweet moods of bashfulness, opposition, joy, and desire. <clears throat> this verse describes the sweetness of her face in that moment. The poets try to compare Sri Rata's face to lotus flowers or the moon. But can the transcendental Prema Swarupini, Sri Radhika, ever be compared to any mundane object? There is no other way to understand Prema Mahi Radha in truth than true love, devotion, and surrender. There is no other way to understand Prema Mahirata in truth than true love, devotion, and surrender. All her emotions will then also be understood. Therefore, it is said, Sat Brema Rasi Saraso Vikasat Sarojam Sat Brema Rasi Saraso Vikasat Sarojam Her face is a blooming lotus in a lake full of love for Krishna the Absolute Truth, Sat. If Sri Raja's face is not compared to a lotus growing from an ordinary lake, but to a lotus growing from a lake, <coughs> filled with the nectar of love for Krishna. It could be somewhat of a worthy comparison. Her face blooms up with joy and desire when she sees Krishna <coughs> and becomes relishable like honey. Svananda Siddhu. 
the words Swananda Sidhu may also mean Svasya Priyatamasya Anandasya Satchit Ananda Rupatvat Shri Krishna Sra Unmadaka Siddhu Swarup. The sweetness of Sri Radhika's face intoxicates Krishna or Sviyanam Saki Manjarinam Ananda Siddhu. Her face is like the honey of bliss for her girlfriends and maid servants when they see it. The practicing devotees are also intoxicated by ecstatic love when they remember the sweetness of Srimati's face. How sweet is that meditation? Srimati has just bathed and her curly locks fall over her face like thirsty bees surrounding a honey-filled golden lotus growing from a love lake. Her curly locks fall over her face like a thirsty, like thirsty bees surrounding a honey-filled golden lotus growing from a love lake. Shamsundara slowly comes down from the tree branch. Waves of desire swell in the ocean of his amorous mellows when he sees Srimati's moon-like face. And with his eyes, he prays to the maidservant to show them a nice bower on the bank of the Yamuna where he can unite with Srimati. Swamini is also very eager to fulfill Krishna's desires. The maidservant arranges for the meeting of this anxious pair in a bower on the bank of the Yamuna and looks through the holes of the foliage to admire their sweet pastimes. Suddenly, the transcendental vision disappears and Sripat pitifully prays. When can I see these sweet pastimes? Oh. 
Rai's lotus face is the abode of all beauty, shining beautifully like a honey dripping hundred petals lotus in a pond of sweetness full of glistening waves. <coughs> Rice lotus face is the abode of all beauty. Shining beautifully like a honey dripping hundred petal lotus in a pond of sweetness full of glistening waves. Her spotless lotus face is filled with the fragrance of full bliss <laughs> and the sweetness uh, and the sweetest nectarian honey and the curly locks surrounding it are like bees playing around this lotus that is the realm that delights everyone's eyes. This full moon of Rata's blissful face increases the nectar ocean of self-bliss. Sabodananda says, when will this fortune come to me that I can see this moon-like face? So when we I think I want to make first a little introduction with that. When we speak about talking, we are like in the position of something we know already. So we talk, right? So what we know we talk. But when we listen, we come to a point where we get something new. There's something new coming because we might not know what we are hearing. So that's why the one who's talking should listen. And then it's a real talk. So Sara, Sara means slave. Sara is the word for late. And Sara is also the word for essence. So many people are asking in, in Radakul, one Babaji, I got there, and that's why I want to share with you. And uh, we're talking, Raghunath Das, Goswami, is this that name is Radakul, right? Yes, yes, right, right, it's Radakul. So, but it's late. <coughs> no, it's Radha. <laughs> so he was saying some very beautiful thing, and in that moment it came just like this to me. It's true. It's really true. When you're in Radha Kun, and you see that lake, Radha Kun, and then you see the word Sara, which means lake, and Sara means the essence. So, 
This is called liquid brain. Rather, this is also liquid brain. And the essence of this brain is Mahabhav. And the personification of Mahabhav is Radha. So when you really at Radha Kun, when you really in Radha Kun, they the presence of Radha. That is Mahabha. Mahabha Chintamani Radha Rasvari. She is born out of that wish fulfilling gem from, from God, you can say. And that is her manifestation comes as well. And then she looks around and she wants to love, but with whom? So she creates Vrindavan. That is how Vrindavan is manifested. And the essence of all that, this is right. The essence of Prem. The essence of Prem. This Prem is Radakun, and the essence of this Prem is Mahabharata. So when you say Radakun, you mean Radharani. That's the point. That's, the point. That's why. Ishtadev is normally you think about a personification of something when you speak about Ishtadev. But that is Radha Kunda, impersonification is Radha. Okay. Usually a pond has no waves. It depends. If there is some influence coming from outside, then maybe some waves are coming up. <laughs> so Radharani's face is described here like a moon who is influencing Rasavai Saha the ocean of rasa. So when Radharani's face is uh, slowly coming up on the horizon, then this ocean of rasa is a move, not just a little move. It's really move by these glistening waves. And actually, what are these waves? In Radharani's face, there are so many feelings described in this moment. Because she actually would have to fulfill her duty. Pick some flowers, doing her oblation to the sun god. That's the duty. Actually, she cannot be here openly with Shyam. It's not the right time. But she's there and desires are coming up. So her face is showing all these different kind of feelings. Yes, I want. No, I cannot. Who, who is there? Who can see us? All these different kinds, bashfulness, shyness, 
all these feelings are actually fighting a big fight in her face in this moment. And this is actually the enjoyment. This is giving Krishna the most enjoyment. He's saying, when I see Radha's face and eyes in that mood, I get millions of times more pleasure than when I directly unite with her. So this verse is actually describing this moment, what is going on in Radharani's face. And this moon-like face is causing this glistening waves in the Sham Ocean. And he is out of himself. He is losing himself. So that may be some influence from outside. I want to add something very, very short. We have the word bath, right? Bath means feeling. And if you take, if you take the B away, you have hava. Hava means air or wind. <coughs> so bath is the wind of emotions. So when you, when the wind of emotions comes into the lake, when the wind comes and blows into the lake, immediately it causes wind. And this is actually what you were saying. Oh, someone jumped in. Yeah. <laughs> is air ridge. Right in Hindi? Even if you jump, I'm going to This is the way of the emotion. The wind of emotion part of the wave is the same way. And Radha Ani is not more than that, she's Mahabha, so the way it must be very strong. Listen. There was a description um, when this picture will come to us. He's going to quit, yeah? He's going to quit. <laughs> yeah, this kid's good. good. Okay. I'm sure. Man. There was also a description that we need the, the blessing to get these pictures. We are waiting for. This is, you read. Mm -hmm. Only by the mercy, no? of only by the mercy of Krishna, Krishna or, or the pure devotee, pure devotee, we can enter in that field. And we can enter, and in this book we can see that there is a pure devotee who is sharing his visions to us, and <clears throat> we hopefully we are praying with a uh, full heart and full intention to get these visions. Because then we will leave all material desires. If we recognize even a drop of this what he described in this book, what he sees, what he feels, and especially this service, so beautiful described and never described before. And our good hope is to get a glimpse of this vision in our own life. Yeah. This is our only hope to get it. 
and by constantly listening to these verses, maybe one day we will get a glimpse, a drop of mercy. I pray hopefully that will, that will happen. Because the situation is very, very, very fortunate to all of us. This is the good hope for this lifetime. Really. Sorry, Again here, it's written, the only cause of Raganuga Bhakti is the mercy of Krishna or his devotee. So we may wonder why it's not written Radha, but who is the best devotee of Krishna? <laughs> The Acharyas are most merciful because they left behind their experiences in their books. Beautiful. And this is actually, we can have Sangha when we read these books deeply dive in deeply and let the feelings actually take over not the mind when we read this and we dive in so that the feelings take over and we forget where we are what we are and so on then we get the full mercy of these great souls then we have real association with them Many years ago, I was thinking when you say fall in love, you, that means a person, right? When you say fall in love, I fall in love. But you can fall in love with a book. You really can fall in love with a book. That is the evidence. Yes, we can fall in love with the vision of Sri Saraswati, his vision, how he sees Radha. We want to understand Krishna through the eyes of Radha. And we want to understand Radha through the eyes of pure Dasis. <coughs> So we may fall in love with these descriptions and with this person who is describing it. And in this way, we can connect with these feelings and be connected with the Rasa. After all, it's called Radha Rasa <coughs> The nectar ocean of Radha's Rasa. And we are already blessed if we get one drop of this nectar ocean. An aspirant is blessed if he can taste even one drop of this nectar ocean.
for Shanfaya. Today is a special day, right? Ananda, Chaturasi. Can you explain a little bit about this day? I have not so much idea. It's the first day of our birthday. Right. And also, one more birthday. My dear Suniti Didi. Also, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we're so happy to be here <laughs> in Vrindavan and be together here and celebrate with all of yeah. our sisters birthday and that is so special that it's together with school gifts appearance day but I have no idea what is the meaning of Ananda Chaturas. <laughs> you don't know. I didn't know yet. Does anyone know? Only few words. But after this subject, it's not good to be. This is super good. Huh? No? It's a cutting. It means a cutting. To cut the, the mood. Hmm? I think if we consider that Ananta Shesh is is Vishnu, but we know also Gurudev explained yesterday Sankashan. So the Sankashan is emanation of Vikram and and it's an example of how the Antaranga Shakti, Nitya Nanda is Ananga Manjarana, the first expansion of Srimati Radhika. As Srimati Radhika is the first expansion of Krishna, Ananga Manjara is the first expansion of Srimati Radhika. And she comes in different, different forms to assist everywhere and serve everywhere. Krishna's creation. So today is a very good day to connect with this service mode and to be in the endless ocean of Seva Vritti, which is the mode of Avanjari. Ananta means endless. No beginning and no end. So today is good meditation to, to feel the endless possibilities of service to Srimati Radhika. And also to take a little bit of this, of this responsibility in my mind. So we see our Buddha, his parents called him Ananta Prashad Singh. Because at that time when he was born in 1945, this Ananta Chaturasi was on the 20th of September. Because that's the day of this year. So usually we celebrate this Ananta Chaturasi day and also 20th September. That's nice, we have two parties always. And today is a little bit this uh, feeling of connection to Nityananda, to, to this eternal service of Srimati Radhika. Wherever she goes, in whichever form she comes, or like Nitai, he is also becoming the bed, he is the umbrella, all these different, different experiences he is doing in his service to assist Gora. So that is also a little bit this feeling today to connect with Guru and Guru Mandrani, of course, and to go deeper and deeper levels according to our feelings. So it's a very auspicious day, like you said, go on. Let's be together in this endless ocean of Seva Vritti, of the mood, of the maidservant, to always be there like a shadow and 
stuff, Swami. And all her different, different moods and feelings that she is expressing in Nitya Leela. But that is also expressed in Gora Leela and also expressed in our daily life. So not to cut this, but to connect it according to our feelings and our moods and our level that we are. You told very nice thing. I don't know.